What's up, team? Happy Why Wednesday. I thought I was going to come in here at some, like, Bon Jovi, some, like, loud music. It's all good. Welcome, everyone, to your unblinded morning huddle, which is, by the way, the number one place to start your day with a daily dose of integrity based human influence. My name's Fernando, one of the proud founders here at Unblinded, and I'm super grateful to have you all here. I'm grateful for all of you that are new, um, that have no idea um, what to expect on these huddles and simply said yes. And I'm also grateful for everyone that's had been here and our leaders and people that are accelerating like crazy, like Jay Levine, Peter Swain, uh, Erica, Craig B, Craig from SoCal, uh, Dr. Michelle Gamble, just so many beautiful souls, Teresa Pfefferly, that are truly acceler accelerating in the most magical of ways. So as we get started and wait a few minutes for Sean to jump on as we you know, carry about our day, um, why Wednesday, um, I personally leverage as a way to re-anchor on my why. And my why is to rewrite humanity. It's two words. Um, it was not always two words. It was always much longer. It spanned from you know, a one-page, multi-paragraph you know, uh, uliloquy to two words. So I'm curious, uh, what is your why? And if you had to break it down to one to three words, what would it be? So let's drop it in the chat. So when Sean jumps on, we can share that energy with him and re-anchor him on his why. So let's drop in the chat. What is your why? What is one word that would describe your why? Or maybe three words that would describe your why. So this way, everyone in the group could begin to see you in a different light. I know we share information. We talk about our businesses. Um, but let's not forget that we're also here for more magic. And if truth can be told, um, that's actually what Sean and I care about the most. We care about more money because it's what people care about. We care about more time because it's what people care about. But what we really care about is magic. So what is that for you? What is your why? Just drop it in the chat, drop a few words, and share uh, what is your why on this Why Wednesday. So we can kick off the day with Sean, with sharing with him um, what's present in the movement, what people care about. Um, I will, in true transparency, Sean reads all of these. Um, he takes the time to read these chats. So, uh, you know, take that for what it may, take that for you, and I want to just pass that along to the movement. Sean, I see that you're on here and not on video yet. Uh, can you hear us? I can hear you, it's Mona. He's not here yet. Okay, cool. everyone. Hey, what's up, Mona? <laughs> what's up? How yeah, and to add on that, actually, Please. so what Fernando said is, is true, but he also, whenever we have, like, Tony Robin calls, he always writes in the chat. Yesterday, we had a Tony Robin call. There was 697 people on the call, and Tony Robin was like, so tell me, you know, what was your breakthrough today in this call? And John's like, okay, right. And I'm like, okay, he's not going to read this, you know, he's like, right, we need to write, we need to participate. And it's part of our journey too, you know, and yes, he will read it. Yes. So yeah, sometimes it's not about the other person. Sometimes it's about us, you know, and, and saying it in our head and writing it with our fingers is, is two different things. So it's good to actually write it for ourselves and for the world to see, because when you say it to the world, then it just gives you that much more accountability. So yeah, just FYI, Sean does it when we have Tony calls and there's 697 people on the call too. So awesome. see you guys later. Thank you, Mona. And I love that distinction. Uh, thank you for that. And it's very true. I don't ask you guys to write this for me, for the movement or for Unblinded. It truly stems from for you. Um, what you speak into existence with language becomes reality. Uh, so it's there. Other people see it. Other people begin to view you and your identity as that. Um, and that's present and that's available. So those are some beautiful things. Uh, as soon as Sean jumps on, I'll begin to read them. I'm seeing them fly through the chat. And, you know, remember, um, this is all about engagement, being inclusive, communicating. Um, so simply ask, uh, feel free to write in the chat. And I'm super grateful for the new voices, for the voices that have emerged, and for the leadership that is present here. I know a lot of you are monitoring, checking. Um, we have people like Donna and Rebecca and Erica, who are constantly making sure that everyone is communicated to. So thank you for all you leaders that are out there making that possible on this beautiful Why Wednesday. And as we jump into a few things, as Sean takes a seat, uh, on our mastery call, we were present to some really great distinctions. Um, as we're, our main focus right now, one of, is to, definitely in service of the movement, is to build your 10 by 10 structure to play the game of purification as well as having your real raw open. And I am just so proud at the acceleration of language that is becoming available and present, and I'm sure to share with you more. We have Sean here. Sean, we also have a lot of cool things in the chat, um, but I'll kick it off to you for a second. What's present for you on this Why Wednesday? Uh, what's present for me is a, an incredible desire 
to um, support people in their focus and bringing about um, just the growth they're seeking, you know? And what's also present for me is sometimes um, I presume uh, self-mastery, you know, a bit. And so let me jump in this way, right? So I think it's completely normal if you get sad. It's completely normal if you get angry. It's completely normal if you feel alone. It's completely normal if you feel hopeless at times. All this is sometimes, right? It's co completely normal if you feel like quitting. It's completely normal if you feel like, why am I doing this, right? It's completely normal if you feel like watching TV. It's completely normal if you feel like just like not creating the next thing or making the next call. It's completely normal if you don't feel like exercising and don't. It's completely normal if you don't feel like talking. It's completely normal if you are like overly chunking things into, oh my goodness, to get this thing done, it's like so overwhelming and it's really not. It's just like the idea of thinking about things is overwhelming. It's completely normal if you feel anxious and scared. Like all that's totally normal. Um, I feel all of those things at times to this minute in this day. And anybody that claims that they don't is just not being um, open and candid, right? So all those things show up for all of us in varieties of different ways with different frequencies. So the idea of Why Wednesday is to be present to those realities and dynamics and then to like restore. So, and all that's in the category of self-mastery. And what we're seeking as our self-mastery elevates and, and all that self-mastery is gives us like your first huddle. You're like, what are we even talking about? Self-mastery is just getting yourself to act. Getting yourself to act, not just randomly, but in the most efficient way possible. So we have self-mastery, influence mastery, process mastery. Self-mastery is driven by having your process, your influence, and getting yourself to act on it with consistency. And the inhibitors of that we talk about all the time are fear, fear of failure, fear of rejection, right? Rejection being the judgment of others, what people are going to say. And it's present for us. It's like wired there, right? And fear of failure, like, oh my God, I'm going to do this. It's going to be a waste of my time, my money, my energy. Like that's present. And what we're doing with our why and why it's so incredibly valuable is if our why is conditioned into us, that's like the fuel um, in opposition to all those other dynamics, right? And the shortcut for that, that I will support studying um, concepts of self mastery. Uh, I would very, let's see, I would say I, beca I began to become truly present to self mastery at least as an eighth grader. You know, it's, that's when I first started wrestling and, you know, uh, but you know what, I, and become more aware of it, but maybe even from Little League, like you get up to bat in the game and you feel scared. You know, I remember feeling like amazingly nervous, you know, in a baseball game, like for judgment and what people are going to think. And the first baseball game I ever played and I was eight years old. So maybe I was present there, but, I, but, but it feels more like by the time, you know, I was in eighth grade that I became more aware of like movies like Rocky and, and the meaning of it and what it meant to move through something regardless of your fear. And it's been a journey since. And so it's been a long, and it was a very interesting, compelling subject for me for my entire life. Um, I thought about it all throughout high school. You know, I was on, for those of you that remember, you know, my high school wrestling coach Woods was here and we ran out of the locker room to music. We, we confronted, we did things, you know, in group dynamic that would seem, you know, tribal and the things that you would see professional athletes doing coming out of the locker room or, or into the stadium. Like, so I understood the dynamics for a long time of how to get ourselves to feel certain ways, but I, they were elusive uh, for me as they may be for you. Um, and they become less elusive, but at times they're still elusive. Like they're, that's just the way mastery is like it's not perfection and so 
um, just connecting on this, you know, um, I don't know if I've ever shared this piece, but this is like where our why, our grounding in something in our self mastery is so critical. And I want you to check in, like, what is it for you? I know Fernando, you know, said, put your why in the chat and I want to connect to that. But like, how does this show up for you? Like, where does this dynamic show up for you? So um, as a player um, coming out of high school, I went into my senior year at Emerson convinced I was going to break the home run record. And that meant something to me. And I had started working with a sports psychologist, which is like my first like real, like tangible in a container dynamic. Um, and his name was uh, Mike Bagley to give him honor. Uh, he was a PhD. He was a former minor league baseball player, catcher. And he was doing a program at our school um, on um, sports psychology. And I began to use it, but what I didn't understand, uh, and I had incredible results, like, right? And then going into my senior year of high school, I stopped using those self-mastery principles, to use our language, and I was disconnecting from certain pieces and where my self-mastery would get thrown off wildly was I would punish myself with anger. I'd get angry at myself if... I didn't do well. And so like my rule was, if I, if I didn't have a good at bat in baseball, then I would get angry. I'd like, be like, like and, and I somehow felt like that anger would power me through to the other side, right? And it, it, it didn't. And what it did do, right, was it led to me um, having a, a good senior year, a very good senior year by most people's standards in the world, but by my standard for what I had expected and what I'd done my junior year, it was heartbreaking, horrific, and devastating. Now, I had already accepted at Columbia. I was already going there. I didn't break any home run records, but here's the, here's the key distinction. This is like where hopefully it lands for everybody. My entire senior year changed in the second game of the season. In the scrimmages, the first five scrimmages, my senior year had five home runs in five games. I had two in one game and singles in three other games and none in one game. In my first game of my senior year, I hit a home run. And I was like, dude, this is going to be insane. Like, this is crazy. I was having days because of, this, because of my self-mastery, visualization, and process mastery, my self and process mastery, I was in the same place. There were days when I hit 10 consecutive balls over the fence in batting practice as a guy was 175 pounds, right? And, the, and down the line dimensions were major league. It was, you know, only like 345 in center field. So it was shorter in center field, but the gaps were close to major league gap level down the lines, major league level. It was crazy. My coach, we were losing so many baseballs. True story. Coach Bob Karsich, you ever want to communicate with him, ask him about this story. We were losing so many baseballs when I was hitting a batting practice that it was harming the budget. And he wanted me to stop hitting balls over the fence and would make me stop batting practice as soon as I hit a ball over the fence after on several days, I hit like 10 in a row out, right? So this is where I was. And I was so excited and so ready. But I had micro distinctions that were so off in my self-mastery that they would lead to absolute destruction of my outcomes and my goals. So in the first game, I, I hit a home run, first regular season game. In the second game, we were facing a kid that was going to Oklahoma State. And it was like a huge showdown day. Like, you know, like I was so excited and so ready. And I hit a ball and crushed it. I have it on video to this day. The coach screams, touch them all. Like touch them all, which means home run, like off the bat. The, the bench rises in screaming, right? I crushed this ball. And true story, the ball literally, like the wind, a wind, it is so windy and a wind gusts straight in from the outfield that it made the ball look like it went like this, like going and literally like blew it back, like from being over the fence to the kid caught with his back to the fence. I did everything optimally. I crushed the ball. Everything was, was optimal everything was right. And 
It just forces beyond my control, like led it to being an L. A great at bat, like meaning you could do something great and everything right, you can, and it doesn't go the way you want. My reaction was like anger, frustration, like self-punishing, like this is ridiculous, what the F is wrong with me? Like, what, like I was just all this craziness. I didn't, I changed my approach the rest of the game, did not have good at bats, and that spiraled my process mastery and my self mastery spiraling together that led to me not hitting another home run my entire senior year of high school baseball and living in immense devastating pain coupled with this insanity that I was playing on a semi pro team that started about halfway through my senior year. And I hit two home runs there in the first two games and hit a bunch of home runs there. So it was a complete insane self-mastery dynamic. Why do I share that? Because I am 100% confident that some version of that is present for you and me in your execution of your process mastery. And maybe for you, it's not anger. Maybe it's fear. Maybe for you, it's not fear of rejection. Maybe it's fear of failure. Maybe it's fear of judgment or disappointment of somebody who is telling you hey, it's better if you um, write blogs than if you um, are booking speaking engagements uh, or doing X, Y, Z or running a 10 by 10, something, right? So what is present for me on Why Wednesday and what our why does for us, it is the grounding force that as we come back to it, it is the space of how we stay in zone action consistent with our process mastery, like the what are you doing in your time blocking, right? The what are you doing in your time blocking and our why grounds us in our self-mastery. So Fernando, what I'd love to know a little bit more about is what are some of the whys we have there? You know, um, I know your why, if you wanna share it, that's wonderful, but what is present for you? What are we doing out there and the world? Okay, I'm going to go into the chat and just scroll up and read some whys, and I'll skip what's present for me. We have uh, Vaughn says, perfect music choice. Richard is to free people. Carlos is to serve others. Um, I think it's Addy is to build family legacy. David Rush is to bring more light to people's lives where there is none. Craig from SoCal is retire for grandkids. Steve G, help others. BC, be heard, be understood. Michelle Gamble, for the sake of our children. Mary, well-intentioned life. Craig, again, retire with grandkids. He wants it twice. For Ina, give workers hope. For Johnny, to be better than I was yesterday. For Robin Crouch, help people take responsibility for their health. Rose, to create world impact. Johnny, showing up is half the battle. David Rush, spreading light and love. Ron Brooks, connecting people. Patricia, rewrite leadership guidance. Love that. Mm. Charlie, to be financially balanced and free, allowing me to focus on giving back. Joe, to disrupt healthcare. And there's much, much more out there in the chat, Sean. Yeah. It's a beautiful job, everybody. And so um, my, my thoughts are, those are absolutely beautiful. And I would really work on expanding that why into your vision and your legacy. And so when you meet, and I'll explain that in a second, but when you meet self-mastery challenges, right? When you meet self-mastery challenges, is it will help you stay focused. Now, I don't do that perfectly. You know, there's things that happen in my world every day, right? Um, that I feel like responding to. And um, a, a, a lion in Tony Robbins' world whose wisdom in the space of, of self-mastery um, and just overall personal development is extraordinary. His name is Pat Nelson. And one of the things Pat mentioned to me when we we're going to begin the the journey of this. And he pulled me aside one night and said, I know who you are. He goes, I've been watching. And this is like when I first started doing videos. We had this beautiful conversation about personal development and where all this was going to go. And this is like 18 months ago. Right. And so he said, like, and I said, well, Pat, why aren't you? He goes, this is like, I, I knew his brilliance and his dream. He flew in like on two days notice, like flew across the country to come to a seminar I did in New York with like 30 people that was just close to a limited number of people. 
And I said, Pat, look, why aren't you, and this applies to you guys, like saying me, he said, why aren't, I said, why aren't you sort of driving, you know, doing more of this? He goes, listen, he goes, I know what the cost of this is. And he goes, I love my life. He goes, I have everything, you know, he's, he's got a beautiful life and it works the way he wants it to beautifully. And he said, the cost of doing this is a lot, dude. Like people are going to take shots. People are going to say things. He goes, I just don't want to deal with all that. Right. And, and that is present. And I, and I mean, on the most benign level, like somebody to me yesterday said, Oh, somebody was saying like, you know, all you're doing is like NLP and it's just like more NLP stuff. And reflexively inside of me, it's like, grr, like, you know, like it, there's still a reflexive misportrayal is still like a grr dynamic for me, which I'm working on, right? Because it's going to happen, like continuously, right? And it's going to happen in little ways, medium ways, larger ways, right? Actually, don't put it out there. It could happen, right? So how about this? I'm going to put this out there. It's never going to happen again, because I believe in attention. It's never going to happen again, but it has happened, right? And so never going to happen again. And I'm going to be completely understood. I'm saying that to put it out there with intention, right? Um, so let's leave that there as we state our intention. However, it has happened in the past. And so what's happened in the past, I've had like a reflexive pull. Like there was a time in the legal world that before I had the top um, jury verdicts, it was like, oh, like, you know, I was categorized by some as just a great business developer, a great marketer. And I am a great marketer and business developer, right? Um, but that upset me because it diminished the formula and my ability to do things I did in the courtroom had done already, but they hadn't been manifested in large jury verdicts because the resolutions I had gotten had been settlements because I was so good at influence. And then I always joke, God brought me and blessed me with two beautiful, like right around the time I was desiring it, these unbelievable examples that became, you know, like climbing Everest, you know, like with no oxygen and it happened. But in the process, I felt very pulled to like respond, right? Like there's, that's a pull for me, right? So we all like fear of like, fear of rejection is not a pull for me, right? It might be for you. So like maybe let's put in the chat, like, what's your pull? Is it fear of rejection? Is it fear of misunderstanding and misportrayal by people? Is it fear of failure of wasting money? Is it fear of failure of wasting time? Is it fear of your confusion? Is it fear of making decisions? Is it overwhelm that you're fear, feeling because of those fears? Like what's there for you? And just sharing those things is, is super valuable. Because in our why, the mission outcome is to come back to it and make sure it's, I love everything everybody said, Mine is, um, as I've shared before, about God and my, you know, meeting God and being accountable for my talents and my abilities. And, and I just wanna, I wanna dig into that actually. I was, gonna, I was gonna pass it. So you could have that for you, right? Have a version of like your why expanding a bit so it works. Here's what that means. It means on a day when I have a full schedule and I didn't have full schedules for many, many years of my life at all. And I had been in business ownership mode, which for some of you is, a, is the dream place you'd like to get to, right? For some of you, you're past there. For some of you, it's a dream. For some of you, you're almost there. For some of you, it seems unattainable. Like I lived that life where I could just do whatever I want all day. And I coached every game for my kids, you know that. But like I, I pitched batting practice. Like my, my day started with which of my children was I picking up that day to do what with from school at three o'clock after I walked them to school and held their hand every single morning. Like that's what my life was. And work was just something that kind of happened in between while I was thinking about like the fun I was going to have with my kids every day. That's what my life was. Right. So it is not simple for me to forget that. Now my kids are a little bit older, they're busy. So it's not like I'm missing out on time. You know, my son is away with friends right now. You know, my, my daughter was like, you know, yeah, I want to go down like the beach for like four days with friends and have like her own time. And there was no prom and it was like, okay. Like, so just life becomes a little different, you know, when your children get to that age. 
So, but that doesn't mean I don't have things that I'd like to do. Like, for example, I'd love to watch James Bond movies all day. Like, that's fun for me. Like, I'd love to watch, like, the Dark Knight Rises trilogy all day and say, I don't want to do any real world opens today. Like, that becomes present for me at times when you're, when you're putting out as much energy as you are, I am. Like, we feel that way. But when I come back to my why, and it's that I'm going to be accountable for my talents, and I can reassess that why at some point and go, is that a healthy why? I think it is, but maybe I could say, is it, you know, and evaluate it. But for now it is, and I'm committed to not reevaluate it until the end of 2020. Like, because I, I get that if we're in the process of consistently reevaluating our self-mastery dynamics, or we're consistently horizontally innovating on our process mastery dynamics, we could really screw ourselves up big time. So I am very committed to the idea that I know what to do in my schedule. I know the staging and I'm vertically innovating and making things better. Like the real raw an hour, we're really getting close to like it's an hour for the real raw. I want to keep making that better in the real raw opens and I'm innovating. I kind of like tighten that top. So I'm vertically innovating, not like horizontally. Yet I feel all these ways at times of like, oh, okay, get your physiology up, get ready, like, okay, like, let's go deliver, like, from your heart, soul, like, right, right. And there's some effort to that. Because people are like, oh, you should always be in flow. Like, dude, if you could always be in flow and be living on your highest purpose, you know, Tim Ferriss writes, and I've heard people say this, I don't know if it's true, about the four hour work week. And people are like, laughing, like, dude, Tim Ferriss doesn't work four hours a week. He works a lot more than four hours a day, right? And I get that it's conceptual. So as you're building something new and great, like for me, it would call you all where I became true business ownership. It was different. Building Unblinded is now a unique dynamic. And I am in a different scheduling flow as you are, if you're growing. When you're growing something, you enter into a different scheduling flow if you're looking to grow it disruptively, right? So why our why and our anchoring is so vital is when it comes from me or for you and you, the, the operative question is when you read your why, your why, when you read it, does it help you get immediately back into like, yes, I'm going to do the other self mastery things I am committed to doing, like getting my physiology set, breathing deeply, like being ready to be present, confront things effectively, right? Not perfectly because none of us are perfect, but like, does it like trigger those dynamics for you? Right. And so my why, as I read, is like, hey, I'm going to be accountable for my talent. Someday I'll meet God. And I want to have the right answers for have maximally given, shared, poured into people. And so it's not me and as rapidly as I can, I could find other people to leverage and scale that mission with, which is why we named the company Unblinded, did not name it Sean Callagy, no, you know, or calling it not the Calgary results formula anymore, which is what I've been calling it since 2003. Um, I've been using it before that or creating it before that, but call it the Unblinded formula. The purpose of all that is so I can get to a place meaningfully and rapidly where we are leveraging, scaling, and driving that mission forward. In between, there's moments where like there's all kinds of self-mastery pulls and tugs and even like ones that make you want to go crazy, right? And do things. So our why, when I read the why, I remember, and then I ask myself, okay, how would this behavior decision fit in alignment with you answering to God about what you're doing? Okay, that behavior would not be aligned this person doesn't belong. This decision would be aligned. This person may belong, but it's a little bit uncomfortable. I like them. Maybe do we, can we talk about all the agreement? Yeah, we got to talk about the agreement details because if not, we're, we're going to create dynamics and challenges. So like, that's what our why does. And then when you match your why and see your process mastery, this is the key connecting moment. When you match your why to your process mastery, people are saying to me, how can you do all of these railroad opens? And why are you doing this? You don't have to do this. It's crazy. My answer is simple. Because this is how I'm going to find the people to work with, how we're going to create the right 
partnerships, people in our programs, base camp, right? That is going to be consistent with the larger why. And as crazy as these 16 hour days or as, in, as intense as these 16 hour days may be right now, we are going to get through and past them to get to a very different place so I can fulfill on my mission, my why, for I'm blinded, for everybody that's a part of doing things here. And as quickly as possible, it's not gonna be about me, right? And I'm saying it's all about me, but it's partially sort of that way. And we're gonna have scale, leverage, and it's like unblinded, yay. If there's no why that you're truly connected to, and that why isn't connected to your process mastery, that's when everything goes haywire. And I think for a lot of people, it is the, it is the sort of beautiful feeling of our why. It feels good to say, I want to help people and I love people. You know, I want to da-da. If it's not connected to your process mastery and the driving forward of your rise of influence mastery, that's when everything breaks down because it's a formula that's completely interconnected. So when you look at those challenges that you have written in the chat, like those are my challenges, <laughs> making sure you're connecting them to your influence and process mastery is how we overcome those challenges. And the pain of connecting to not getting to our why is what will drive you, the pain of losing your why, of being disconnected to it versus the pleasure of how good it feels you to think about your why. So Fernando, final, final. Um, I'm actually writing down that line. That was a, 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 a new, I'm processing. That was a new distinction for me. Um, I, I thought I understood the formula and that that was a new, a new hook. As I feel like when you're on the monkey bars, I just like got, got to the next one. And it was the connection. And th this is what it is for me. I just didn't have language for it. This is you know, what you do. This is the genius that is this formula in yourself. It is the connecting of self-mastery to the process mastery. Because you're right, rewriting humanity felt w one way. Now it feels another because I feel like it's happening. I don't feel, I know, it's, I'm very certain. It's happening through the 10 by 10, through the peopleification structure. It's happening. So it's through the, pr the, the hook of your self-mastery to your process, coupled with the rise of my influence mastery to have other people see their future in our work, in us, in me. Um, it, it doesn't happen. It breaks down. So that one sentence, when your self-mastery is connected to your process mastery, coupled with the rise of your influence mastery, everything happens or breaks down. So that was a new one. For me. Thank you. Because conceptually, our why and practically feels really good and like out there. But if it's not driving us to count our sales meetings and to make them listed, <laughs> then we're never gonna get, we're not, we're not gonna fulfill our why. If our why has something to do with business, if it doesn't, fine, right? But even if it's impact, there's still numbers of people you're impacting, however you're impacting them. And if it's like, just not just, but if it's impacting your children, it's still a sales meeting with your child to say like, yeah, like this is how you live life best and how you fulfill your dreams and how you do this or that, like whatever the that is, it's that interconnection. So said another way, why Wednesdays is about feeling beautiful and great. And it's, it's saying, make sure your why is beautiful, is driven, is clear. And that like you're literally connecting that your number of sales meetings today, sales, disposable income, is putting your why in jeopardy if you're not following your process mastery. So Fernando, you are putting your desire to rewrite humanity through peopleification in jeopardy if you're not counting your sales meetings today and having a process set to make sure that the most optimal to drive forward that outcome. Like who they're about, what they're about. Does that make sense? It does. And like massive excruciating pain is like what's present in like the value chain breakdown of that not being connected. All good though. Self-mastery is intact, but like, you know, deep, deep shot of like, damn, damn. So very, very present to that. Which, which is what can make it feel like, oh, like, you know what? I'm not for, I'm not talking about you, Fran, for any of us. I'm going to get to go meet like, you know, um, Bruce Springsteen today. 
and, and, and like be one of 50 people in a private meet and greet VIP thing where he'll sign an autograph. Like that could feel really amazing and we might take a picture together, but how is that going to help like versus having your sales calls and your speaking, but like, it's just not like, so it's like literally that thinking of, is this in alignment with advancing brick by brick, piece by piece, as rapidly as I can, what I'm trying to create. So that's it. So I think we're at time. Yes. Yes. All right. Everybody. Thank you. Uh, thank you for being on the huddle. Thank you for being present. And I share this with all my heart. The space that we are in here is how you, with integrity from your heart, make more money in less time with more magic. I am not Master Co. And he is amazing, right? I am Herb Brooks meets Larry Ennis meets Coach Slazak, right? Like that's the, that those are the people who meets my mom, who has deep love and my, my grandparents, right? But all those people have deep love but they also told the truth and they also self-reflected and they also created disruption. And that's what I'm blind to It is not a place to just come and be comfortable, but it is a place to come for truth and for change and disruption. And I continued to say this with my heart, right? In the 10 by 10, higher fast and fire fast, in the work that you do overall, right? Higher, slow, clear agreements, fire fast, right? And that is the dynamic when you see that things are out of alignment, right? And that has been something that is a, for, for people who are heart-centered, right? That is a challenge, right? We like to hire quickly and fire slowly. That has been the greatest mistake of my life. Hire quickly, fire slowly, right? And fire or hire quickly, Trans, maybe it feels better to say this, transition relationship, like transition relationship. So begin relationship slowly, or at least it clearly in writing, right? And then transition relationship rapidly as those things break down in all of your ecosystem mergers, in all of your conversations, in your 10 by 10s, go fast. Like you're get, building momentum, your 10 by 10s, it's a little bit different right? It's a little different. Like it's not like permanent agreement partnerships, like get to know each other. So get to know each other quickly and transition out quickly. So love you guys. Have a beautiful white Wednesday. Thanks.